Slavery, tortures and orgies. The true story of Volkswagen hides the shadiest moments of the company. Today, the Volkswagen Group is the largest car manufacturer in the world in terms of production. Many people have a friendly image of the brand thanks to models like the Beetle or the VW Bus. However, the story behind the brand couldn't be further from friendly. From the latest emissions scandal back to bribing German council members with sex and all the way back to their shady beginning. We're going to expose the true story of Volkswagen and how the most iconic car of the brand was actually built by slaves. Starting with the emissions scandal from 2015, Volkswagen equipped around 10 million cars with a secret software. This software, called the Defeat device, detected when the car was being tested for emissions and tweaked the engine settings to reduce emissions. But during regular driving, the system switched to a different mode, boosting performance but releasing nitrogen oxide emissions up to 40 times the legal limit. And yes, this was bad for polar bears and blah blah blah, not very interesting, but keep watching, because what the world discovered in 2005 about Volkswagen was much more interesting. This is Peter Hartz, human resource executive at Volkswagen, advisor to the German Chancellor, creator of the Hartz reforms of the German labour market. Kind of looks like Karl Fredriksen. During the mid-90s, Volkswagen was going through a bad financial moment. They were losing money and they discovered that they could get out of that mess by firing a lot of people. But they couldn't do that because of laws and stuff. So Karl decided, uh, Peter decided, to use his influence in the German council to support a series of controversial reforms that would allow Volkswagen to make those layoffs and survive their period of crisis. Basically, he needed to convince a bunch of politicians. And how do you convince politicians? That's right, bribing them. And that is exactly what Peter did. But he didn't bribe them with money or Amazon gift cards. No, he sent them on pleasure trips and used the company's money to pay for them. These pleasure trips often included fancy parties all around the world involving very naked women. One of these politicians was Klaus Volkert, former head of Volkswagen's Works Council. He was sent to prison for almost three years for taking an estimate of 2 million euros in bribes, including half a million euros in expensive gifts that he sent to his former Brazilian lover. Crazy, right? But things got crazier when a German magazine dropped a bombshell from the wife of Helmuth Schuster, former director of Skoda. She claimed that VW board members were getting Viagra and other aphrodisiacs on the company's dime during their pleasure trips. Anyway, let's leave those sexy parties behind and go back a few decades. Because from 1964 to 1985, Brazil had a military dictatorship. And for 21 years, the military regime did many bad things people that supported communism were arrested, tortured and exiled. Some big brands and international manufacturers that had businesses in Brazil were actually helping the military to find those possible communists among their employees. One of them was Volkswagen. But it went even further than that, because when Volkswagen alerted the government about their employees having any signs of rebellion, the government sent armed soldiers to question and torture them. Those tortures often happened in the same Volkswagen factories where those people were working, and Volkswagen allowed that to happen. I know, we went from pleasure trips to tortures and communism, but don't worry, it gets even worse. Because in Austria, there was a very bad man. He looked like this, but without the hat. He just got kicked out of a painting school, so he was pissed he would never be able to achieve his childhood dream of becoming an artist. So he started pursuing his second childhood dream, conquering Europe. Anyway, I don't remember that much about this guy because I didn't pay much attention at school, so let's just skip a few things. The point is, he is now in Germany and he is the Chancellor. Being the head of the German government, he wanted what's best for the people of Germany. Some of them, at least. During this time in the early 20th century, the first cars were starting to populate the streets. In the US, Ford had the Model T, which became very successful because it was easy to build and cheap enough for the average American to buy. This hatless guy wanted the same for Germans, so he decided to design a car that everyone could afford. A people's car, which in German translates to Volkswagen. This is still a video about them, I promise. He first went to Josef Garns for help. Garns had developed a vehicle that fit well with what Hatless Guy was looking for, an economical, reliable and versatile vehicle. But for some reason, this partnership never worked. I don't really know why. I mean, Josef Garns was the perfect man for the job. He already had a lot of experience developing cars like this. Anyway, Hatless Guy then asked another automotive engineer for help, Ferdinand Porsche. He gave Porsche this sketch he drew himself to show how he wanted the car to look. 
No wonder he got kicked out of painting school. After a few years of development, the first Volkswagen Beetle was born. Only it wasn't a Beetle or a Volkswagen. It was named the KDF Wagen or the Strength Through Joy Wagen. Atlas Guy didn't want to call it Volkswagen because it was a term used by Josef Ganz in his prototypes, and Atlas Guy didn't want to be related to him in any way. Again, I don't know why. Now, remember I told you Hatless Guy was a very bad man? And back at the beginning of the video when I talked about slavery? Yeah, well, Hatless Guy allowed manufacturers to use slave force, so Ferdinand Porsche took advantage of this to build his car. A car that would later become the birth of the Volkswagen we know today told you this was still a video about Volkswagen. With almost 90 years of existence, especially in Germany, it's difficult not to have a shady history. Perhaps Volkswagen's dark days are behind it, or maybe they're just getting started. Pleasure Trips 